Welcome to my practical guide on imitating Mozart's style. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a basic idea like this and turn it into a complete theme like this. This isn't a video for complete beginners. You should already know some music theory relevant to the Austro-German 18th century classical style. This includes items like Roman numerals, functional harmony, the relationship of melody and harmony, including embellishing tones, such as neighbor tones, and the cadential 6-4. My goal here is to be as practical as possible. I want to keep the guidelines simple because I want to start making music right away. So this won't be a comprehensive and nuanced catalog of possibilities. Instead, it'll be a framework that we can expand and refine later. In order to make a practical formula, I need to have guidelines that combine norms of the general genre, that's the classical style of Austro-German music in the late 18th century, with something that is distinct to the specific composer I'm discussing. In our case, that's Mozart. In order to start making music right away with a formula, the guidelines need to cover aspects including orchestration, meaning the choice of instrument, form, harmony, melody, and rhythmic texture. My recommendation to efficiently achieve this is to write for solo piano using a call and response sentence phrase, classical style functional harmony, the texture of a melody over an Alberti bass, and the special ingredient to get that Mozart sound is accented, chromatic, lower neighbor, embellishing tones. When we put all of these together, we'll end up with something that's pretty close to Mozart's style. But it isn't perfect. Just as the AI pictures of Mozart don't always give Mozart five fingers on each hand, there's more to his music than just this starting point. The first thing we need is an idea which we can develop. In classical music theory, there's a term for the basic idea which starts a phrase. It's called the basic idea. It's a great term. I'm going to recommend that we make a basic idea which is two measures. Have the first measure on tonic, the second measure on dominant, and let's keep it really simple. You might have an arpeggiation or a little scalar motion, just having a few repeated notes is enough. Even if you feel it's too simple, that's okay because we can still embellish it later. Here are two examples of basic ideas. The first example has an arpeggio of the tonic and then some scalar motion between chord tones on the dominant. The second example has an upper neighbor and a lower neighbor to a chord tone and then some repeated notes on a chord tone. Before we develop a specific basic idea, let's quickly review what a sentence phrase is in the classical style. We start with a presentation phase. This is where you hear a basic idea and repetition of that basic idea. The repetition could be exact, it could be sequenced. What I will recommend is a version called a call and response presentation. In this type of presentation, the basic idea is repeated, but the roles of dominant and tonic are switched. We follow this with a continuation phase. In the continuation phase, ideas get shorter and then there's motion to a cadence. Let's begin with the basic idea I have here. You'll notice I slightly adjusted the harmony from before. Instead of a root position dominant, I now put it in first inversion. This is a good choice if you're going to follow the classical style to keep the bass line smoother and save the root position dominant for the cadence. Choosing this particular inversion was also done in order to make a nice imperfect consonance with the downbeat of the melody. 
let's now examine the features of this basic idea so that we know how to craft a response to it. It begins with an arpeggio of the tonic harmony, a leap down and then a big leap up, and it's followed with stepwise motion between chord tones. If we want to craft a response that still sounds like a repetition of the idea, we need to maintain the contour and the rhythm, but map it on to a reversal of the dominant and tonic harmonies. So if I take that same arpeggiated shape for the dominant harmony and the same stepwise motion for the tonic harmony, I can generate a response, but I don't recommend transposing the entire thing up a fifth. Instead, you can map this on to nearby chord tones, which are usually about a step away. Now that we have our presentation phase, we need to add shorter ideas of just one measure each and then motion to a cadence. I'm gonna recommend we break off the second half of the basic idea. You could have a completely new idea or use the first half, but this seems to work really well. We already have a relationship of those ideas moving up a step in the presentation. So I think it would work really well to take that idea and move it up a step. The next thing which needs to occur is to have some motion to a cadence. So I'll think about this first in terms of the formulaic harmonic progression. I recommend a predominant harmony going to a cadential 6-4 for a half cadence, but you could also have the dominant arrive earlier to have a PAC. Notice what we have here in order to generate the sketch. I'm first thinking about melodic ideas because that's what's going to sound like it's developing and fragmenting from the basic idea. Then I think about harmonic ideas. And the filler here afterwards would be to harmonize those shorter ideas and then add some sort of formulaic melody to go with the cadence. It might end up something like this. We could be done constructing our phrase, at least for how many measures we need, but if you just want a way of generating a lot of material from one basic idea, or you're improvising and need to stall for time, we can turn that sentence into twice as much material without needing to come up with double the ideas. What I will recommend is noticing that we end up at a half cadence will make this entire eight measure phrase the first half of a compound period. So this phrase will be the antecedent. Then we can repeat our sentence and make that the consequent phrase. The only thing that needs to be changed is to make the dominant arrive a little bit earlier. So that way there's time to resolve to the tonic. Here's one possible melody which would go with the earlier dominant and resolve it into a perfect authentic cadence. Our phrase that I just made is still pretty boring because there isn't enough rhythmic activity. So one way that we can generate activity is a form of arpeggiation known as the Alberti bass. If you already have harmonies written in three parts, we can activate those by taking the lowest part and putting it on the strongest part of the beat or meter. Then the uppermost part will go on the weakest part and the middle voice will end up filling in the remaining gap. Now where those notes will end up depends on whether or not you want to activate it into eighth notes or 16th notes, or if you're in three, four. But if I'm in four, four, and I want eighth notes, it might end up something like this. And we can take the very boring texture from before and activate it into something which has a lot more movement, like this. With the exception of the very last measure and a half, I've taken the progression to our phrase before and activated it with an Alberti style bass. It's starting to seem vaguely like music in the classical style now, but definitely not yet like Mozart, 
we still need to add in some Mozart style embellishing tones. In order to sound like Mozart, I recommend using accented chromatic lower neighbor tones, or to be more precise, notes the semitone just below a chord tone, because sometimes in context, they could be passing tones. Before we put those into our phrase, let's quickly review what that means. If you have chords like C major, D minor, or G major, the notes a semitone below are shown here. Notice that not all of them require chromatically going outside of the key. Let's now return to our presentation phase of the sentence that we had from before. If we're going to have notes be embellished, we're going to take what was one note and make it two, because we need to have the semitone just below a chord tone still resolve. So I recommend good spots for embellishment are notes which last longer. I recommend in this case, let's have measures two and four as a spot to embellish. The pitches D and E are chord tones of each harmony there. We can take those notes and replace them with both the semitone below and resolution to that chord tone. What we end up with is technically a passing tone, but I still recommend thinking about them as lower neighbor tones. Okay, I've taken the phrase from before and added some of those accented chromatic embellishing tones at the locations with a star. This ought to sound like Mozart now, especially since I went in and added a few extra embellishments at a few other spots here. The general aesthetic idea I have here is to make more embellishment as we progress through the phrase, so it sounds like there's development. Some of the embellishments I opted for just gave the melody a little bit more rhythmic activity, but I do want to single out the final embellishment at the perfect authentic cadence. That's something that you can add to the formula as well. I took the notes of a dominant seventh chord and I held them over a little bit longer after the bass got to the tonic. This is a very Mozartian cadential pattern. Let's have a listen. The formula from before works pretty well for composing, but it won't work for improvisation, because in improvisation, we can't start off with a general idea and then go back and change the rhythmic texture or add a few chromatic embellishing tones later. So let's take this basic idea in D major and see how the process might be affected if we imagine ourselves instead as an improviser. This basic idea starts with motion from tonic to dominant, just as before. It starts off with an upper and lower neighbor and then has some repeated chord tones in the second half. Before we can craft a response to this, we already need to start playing it in the full Mozart style texture with an Alberti bass. The second half looks like a great spot for a chromatic embellishment. Those repeated notes E are chord tones, so we could replace one with the semitone below, and that would be D sharp. I'm also going to take the dominant and put it into inversion so that we can have a smoother bass line. This might sound familiar, but we'll get to that later. Crafting a response to the basic idea occurs similarly to before, except with the embellishment and Alberti bass already happening at the same time. The melody is mapped onto the flipped dominant and tonic harmonies. Notice that you don't have to transpose the melody by a fifth. You can also look for notes a step away. In the continuation, if you're a genius improviser, by all means develop your ideas as before. 
But if instead you want a way to fake it until you make it, here's one approach. Think about a formulaic progression that you can perform in the left hand. And in the right hand, just find notes that are a semitone below a chord tone and resolve them. If you need more material, fill in some arpeggios or scales. I don't totally love it, but in improvisation, we have to be a little bit more gestural and less fussy since everything is happening in real time. Here's the transcription of what I played. The last measure doesn't feel very cadential since it rhythmically flows into the next measure, but there's no time to be so picky. You should be able to get a lot of mileage out of the formula I gave you for sounding like Mozart, but I also want to set up a way to refine it. And the best source of ideas for doing so is Mozart's actual music. There's a great way to look for new ideas to add into the formula if you don't want to just randomly listen to all of Mozart's music. You can do what Daniel Stevens refers to as inverted analysis, which essentially means doing a musical exercise on your own first, for which one possible solution could have been something by Mozart. For our purposes, we could start with a basic idea that actually is from a Mozart piece and then craft our own phrase before consulting what Mozart wrote. The reason the D major basic idea from before might have sounded familiar is because Mozart used it. Here's the phrase from Piano Sonata K576. It has the basic idea up an octave, but notice the accompaniment style and continuation are quite different. Now that we've had a chance to compose on our own and compare it with Mozart's version, we can incorporate some new things into our formula. You might notice, for example, that the basic idea goes to predominant at the beginning instead of dominant, or the accompaniment texture is to have some repeated two voice chords in the left hand. If you want to do some inverted analysis on your own, I recommend starting with these basic ideas drawn from Mozart piano sonatas. These are really great places to start because they each present their own little challenges, being in 3-4, a minor key, or going back to tonic within the basic idea. And doing so will give you manageable things to add into your formula. They also, once you consult what Mozart did, provide, I think, great places to start when adding to the formula. As you refine and expand the formula using Mozart's actual music, you may find some things such as basic ideas that don't just go from tonic to dominant, or basic ideas that don't go into a call and response sentence phrase. You might also find more harmonic options, including what to do in a minor key, how to use a tonicization, or to modulate into a new key. And there are more textural possibilities for expressing harmonies. You might also encounter other forms of melodic embellishment, such as appoggiaturas and suspensions, or long trills, which typically occur at important cadences. And if you want to write a complete piece, which is to say to go beyond a single phrase, you'll need to understand how Mozart composes larger scale forms, such as sonata and rondo form. My goal here has been to give you some introductory guidelines so that you can compose or improvise in the style of a Mozart piano sonata theme. So now it's time for you to go and compose or improvise. Good luck. <laughs>